Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I am reviewing the first OVA of 3 by 3 Eyes. Now, when I first got into anime in the mid 90s, 3 by 3 Eyes was one of those shows that produced a lot of passion in people. There were very few people who'd actually seen 3 by 3 Eyes, but those who did talked about it. And then when it was actually licensed and released over here in 2001, it generated a lot of excitement. As with so many anime creations of its time, this was based on a long-running manga. Now, this OVA was released in 1991, and boy is that evident. There are a lot of 1980s elements to this. It feels very 80s, from the over-the-top action to the character designs. One big genre in the 80s and 90s was high fantasy. From Record of Lotus War and Five Star Stories to El Hazard and Oh My Goddess, big magical powers and fantasy worlds saw a big surge in popularity, more so than we see now. That's echoed in Three by Three Eyes, which focuses on a young girl with magical powers. The basic premise is important here. A teenage boy saves a cute girl who turns out to have magical powers that she manifests. She's been searching all her life for this magical MacGuffin thing. Turns out she's the last in a long race of spellcasters, and this magical MacGuffin will turn her human. When the boy gets involved and saves her life, she basically turns him immortal. This turns out to be a good excuse for both over-the-top action sequences as other monsters and demons search for the magical MacGuffin, as well as romantic comedy misunderstanding sequences because the girl's magical personality and her normal personality are polar opposites. When all of her magic abilities manifest, she's gruff and very standoffish. Tundere. Normally, she's sweet and kind, the classic Yamato Nadeshko personality. As you can imagine, this comes across as a series tailor-made for teenage boys. You get two popular girl personalities in one character, plus ridiculous magical powers, over-the-top action sequences, all set in the modern world with guns and fast cars and so forth. Moreover, the show's art tends towards a dark, almost noir palette that complements the show's tone perfectly. Unfortunately, the staff did not appear to have the budget to really do this concept full justice. The animation, while sufficient to tell the story, by OVA standards is pretty minimal in terms of amount of movement and action. Moreover, the characters are often off-model, although the action moves fast enough that I never felt distracted by it. Worse, the editing felt wrong. It felt like, and I know I can't explain this well, but it was almost like they took the storyboard and every panel of the storyboard was given a corresponding shot of almost exactly the same length. There was no finesse, there was no sense of directing the eye towards the action. I just never felt pulled in. Moreover, the combination of the wacky romantic comedy elements, plus the intense and often quite bloody action sequences, created some cognitive dissonance for me. I wasn't quite sure when a character was hurt because I wasn't sure if they were being funny or not. Worse, the problems that the characters face are mostly villains of the week. They're either monsters who come after the magical MacGuffin and don't get it, or monsters who come after it and get it temporarily, then the heroes have to go out and get it back. It would help if the villains had any depth to them at all, and it would also help if the heroes had been developed much over the course of the OVA, but because it's an action story, it's, there's not much there to the heroes yet. I think this show lives and dies on audience identification with the main characters, and I will admit this did work well for me. The show does spend a significant amount of time establishing why the boy likes the girl and why the girl deserves that attention. Even in her shy Yamato Nadeshiko personality, she displays remarkable drive and persistence, and the boy never leaves her side. I completely bought their mutual attraction. As with so many things, the ending is crucial, and I have to admit, I love the ending of this OVA. Unfortunately, I can't spoil it. I really can't spoil it. But to me, it impresses me on many levels. There's a lot going on in that ending, and they do things that I did not expect, and that also do tie up a lot of important things. And Again, there's a lot going on there. Unfortunately, I did feel like I had to slog through a lot of uninteresting villains to get there. 